Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start, at the very least, on my review of the Magical Mimics in Oz. So this is Wizard of Oz book number 37. This is written by Jack Snow. This is the Empty Grave Retrofit Edition with Adam Nikolai. Basically, this uh, is publishing press, uh, Empty Grave Publishing. They took the public domain text of the book uh, and republished it, which works for me because it means I was able to track it down without having to spend a fortune. Um, but also, it's then got a, a, like an added little uh, story to it as well. So anyway. Anyway, I am going to uh, read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads. With Ozma and Glinda gone, will anyone notice that Dorothy and the wizard haven't quite been themselves? And can Ozma's cousin Ozana and the real Dorothy get to the Emerald City before it is completely overthrown by legions of shape-shifting body snatchers? Then accompany Tote, a wooden outcast from Rosanna's picture-perfect village of Pineville, as he and Whitefinger, the ex-woodcutter, struggle to understand what the only flower ever to be banned from the Story Blossom Garden may or may not be trying to tell them in Nikolai's 2012 illustrated novella, Tote's Blemished Blossom. So again, it's kind of weird that the blurb has more about this Tote's Blemished Blossom than the actual main book. Um, but anyway, anyway, I read this uh, uh, over a, like, a couple of uh, days on the exercise bike at the gym and we will just go straight on in so chapter one right away it annoyed me because toto says certainly uh while i while eyeing the princess questioningly i hate adverbs when they're like unnecessary wise questioningly that is horrible that is vile anyway so we get a reference to uh the beautiful forest of bursey which lies just across the deadly desert to the south of Oz. Isn't that the forest where Santa Claus was found as an infant and adopted by the forest nymph? Asked Dorothy eagerly. And um, it was just interesting to me because I read this on the run up to Christmas. And we get this little bit, um, which is true. In the old days, Ozma's voice was musing and thoughtful as she continued. When mankind was simpler and gentler of nature, it was easier for the fairies to do their good works and to aid the helpless humans. But today, few humans believe in fairies. The children do, Dorothy suggested. Yes, yeah, said Ozma, but unfortunately, as the children grow older and become men and women, they forget all they ever knew about fairies. I wish, she added wistfully, that the men and women of the world would keep a bit of their childhood with them. They would find it a valuable thing. And I think that's true. Okay, and then I didn't tab anything out for a fair old while. Twelve chapters, in fact. So they're in the Story Blossom Garden, and the idea here is that the various flowers and plants have stories to tell, so if you pluck a flower and listen to it, it will tell you a story. And so we get this, um, All the flowers in my garden are story blossom flowers. Pick a blossom and hold it to your ear and it will tell you its story. When the story is done, the blossom will fade and wither. Oh, but I shouldn't like any of the beautiful flowers to die, protested Dorothy, even to hear their lovely stories. They do not die, replied Ozana. As I said, these are no ordinary flowers. They do not grow from seeds or bulbs. Instead, as soon as a blossom has told its story, it fades and withers. Then one of my gardeners plants it, and in a few days it blooms afresh with a new story to tell. The flowers are all eager to be picked so that they may tell their stories. Just as ordinary flowers give of their perfumes freely and graciously, so my flowers love to breathe forth the fragrance of their stories. A poet once said that perfumes are the souls of flowers. I have succeeded in distilling those perfumes into words. And we learn that, uh, Roses don't tell all, uh, all tell the same love story. Um, so we get, No indeed, said Ozana. While it is true that all the roses tell love stories, for the rose is the flower of love, all roses do not tell the same love story. Since no two rose blossoms are identical, no two blossoms tell the same story. It was my purpose in creating the garden to supply myself with a never-ending source of amusement as an escape from the boredom of living alone on this desolate mountaintop. I was reminded of the princess in the Arabian Nights Tales. You will recall that she told her stories for a thousand and one night. My story blossoms, Ozana concluded with a smile, can tell many, many more than a thousand and one stories. There are many thousands of blossoms in my garden and each blossom has a different story. Makes me wonder what kind of flower told this story. So here we go, we learn a little bit more about the different kinds of flowers and the stories that they tell. Um, so, Dorothy dropped to her knees before a cluster of pansies. As she bent her ear over one of the little flower faces, it murmured, pick me, little girl, pick me. I'll tell you an old fashioned story of once upon a time about a wicked witch and a beautiful princess. The wizard found himself admiring the flaming beauty of a stately tiger lily. Placing his ear close to the blossom, he listened and heard the flower say in a throaty voice, Pick me, O oh man, and hear a thrilling story of splendid silken beasts in their sultry jungle lairs. Now Dorothy was listening to a purple thistle that spoke with a rich Scotch burr. Pick me, little girl, and you'll make no mistake, for I'll tell you a tale of a highland lassie for auld lang syne. 
Noticing a tawny blossom with vibrant purple spots, Dorothy placed her ear close to it. This was a harlequin flower and it said, Pick me, child, and I'll tell you a wonder tale about Maryland and its valley of clowns, where dwell the happy, fun-loving clowns who delight in making children laugh. Dorothy remembered reading in a storybook about Maryland and the valley of clowns. Next was a black-eyed Susan that murmured to Dorothy, Pick me and I will tell you the story of three things that men love best. Black eyes and brown and blue. Men love them all, but oh, black eyes, men love and die for you. So, um, Dorothy and the wizard uh, end up in this flower garden as well, and I wanted to read these bits. I particularly like the, the bit about Dick Superguy. Um, but again, I just wanted to read you these things so that you know what, the, what stories the flowers can tell. I wonder, thought Dorothy, if the sunflower would tell me a story about my old home in Kansas. There used to be a great many sunflowers on Uncle Henry's farm back there. A tiny violet growing in a mossy bed caught the girl's eye, and as she knelt to hear its words, a shrill and pleasant voice exclaimed, Pick me, pick me, pick me immediately. I'll tell you a story that will burn your ears off. All about Dick Superguy, greatest detective in the world. He can't be killed, he's all powerful. Dorothy was sure the shy little violet hadn't uttered these words. While she looked about to see where the rude voice was coming from, one of the little wooden gardeners stepped up and said apologetically, Beg your pardon, miss, it's just a weed. They're always loud and noisy, and while we don't care much for their stories, we feel they have as much right to as any other plants. Even a magic fairy garden has its weeds. The wizard had strolled over to the pond of placid blue water, and placing his ear close to a green pad on which nestled an exquisite water lily, he heard these words. Pick me, O oh man, and I'll tell you a tale of a magic white ship that sails the jeweled seas and of the strange creatures that dwell in the blue depths. Turning to a lotus blossom, the wizard heard a sleepy voice murmur, Pick me, pick me, I'll carry you afar to the secret islands of the never-ending nights, where the winds are music in the palm trees and the hours are woven of delight. Okay, and then we uh, we get uh, Dorothy's going off to bed and they give her um, a poppy, and it says, Here, Princess Dorothy, the thoughtful little maid said, listen to the story of the poppy blossom and you'll be sure to sleep well. So Dorothy listened to the soft, slumberous voice of the poppy and was asleep almost before the tale was finished. What kind of a story did the sweet poppy tell? Why, a bedtime story, of course. Uh, which makes sense, but it's also a throwback to that th uh, first Wizard of Oz, Oz books. Uh, the very first book in the series where the travellers all fall asleep in a field of poppies because poppies are where you get heroin from. Oh yeah, and then, so Uncle Henry goes off to uh, Glinda's castle to copy down the story of the mimics from the, the, the great book of records there in the hope that it will be useful. And he just comes back at the end, and he's like, oh, I got back too late. And it's like, well, what was the point of him fucking going then? Like, he gets this. Here's the whole story of the mimics. I copied everything the great book of records had to say about them. And, and then I left Glinda's castle last night, traveling all night long so as to get here as early today as possible. But I guess, he concluded, gazing ruefully at the papers he carried, these ain't much use anymore. Not one of us could have done better than you did, Uncle Henry, Ozma consoled him. Instead of regretting your trip, she added wisely, let us instead be grateful that there is no longer any need for us to concern ourselves with what the Great Book of Records has to say about the mimics. I would be so annoyed. Like, he travelled for days to do that. Alright, then we get Totes Blemished Blossom, uh, the short story by Adam Nikolai. I didn't tab anything out about it, I don't have much to add. Um, it was better than the previous Adam Nikolai short story, but it just... He's not particularly good at adding to the Oz. I, I'm sure he has like his own books I'm sure are very good but um, yeah I don't really see the need for him to be adding new Oz short stories. I feel like he only did that to make it so that he could publish this in the first place as a bit of a cash grab really. I don't know maybe I'm wrong but uh, yeah it just wasn't particularly wasn't it wasn't my thing. So, uh, anyway, The Magical Mimics in Oz by Jack Snow. Um, really enjoyable Oz book. Jack Snow actually has been one of the better kind of... Because um, we've had about four or five different authors by this point who, who've worked on the Oz series, and his books I've probably enjoyed the most other than the L. Frank Baum originals. And, um, yeah, I think this is one of the best of the lot as well. Um, it's, it is. It's quite dark. I like the elements of these like shadow people, the magical mimics. Overall, I gave it a pretty strong 3.5 out of 5. So there we have it. That's what I made of The Magical Mimics in Oz by Jack Snow. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.